Hey, what is going on everyone? Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully you're doing well. Today I wanted to make a video discussing my experience uh, becoming an Apple certified Macintosh technician. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But basically, if you're wondering what that is, it's just a cert from Apple that basically says you're certified to diagnose and repair and troubleshoot Mac computers. So my main reason for getting this certification was not to actually become a Macintosh technician, but really just to pad my resume and show employers that I have some experience working with Apple products. I've also always loved Mac computers and just wanted to learn more about them in general. So this seemed like a really cool certification that would A, allow me to stand out professionally and B, learn more about something that I really enjoy. So the purpose of this video in particular is just to discuss my experience getting certified, writing the exam, what was on the exam. I want to talk about the studying process, how I studied, uh, and maybe some tips and advice for anybody else who's looking to become uh, ACMT. It's not a super hard exam. In fact, I'd say it's one of the easier certs that I've ever written, but it's also very particular to Apple. They, they, they lay it out in a very structured, very Apple-like way, which is a good thing, but it means that you have to sort of follow their guidelines for studying. And there's not really a lot of other third-party material you can use. It's really just buy Apple stuff and then go from there. So I'm going to cover all that in this video and I hope you guys enjoy. The studying process itself for this exam was not too bad. I think I officially started studying sometime in June or July. I actually started studying with my girlfriend and that was really cool. We both sort of helped each other go back and forth with some of the questions. And the guide that we used, it's not, it's not so much a guide. It's like you purchase this thing from Apple. It'll be in the description below, by the way. It's like the Apple Care Technician Training Program. It's like $400 Canadian. You buy that. It gives you a code. They actually email you a code. They don't just like give you one instantly. They actually ship you out a code, which is kind of kind of ridiculous, but they ship you out a code and then you can use that to access Atlas. It gives you all the information, all the training guides, all the questions, practice quizzes, things like that. And you sort of run through that at your own pace. And then after you've completed everything, you can buy the exam online for like, I think it was like $20 or something. It's really, really cheap. There's two that you need to pass though. The first one is like the service fundamental exam. That's the one that kind of covers just dealing with the customers. And this is how you deal with customers. And the customer comes in, you know, kind of angry and upset or maybe confused. And you have to sort of control the situation and listen to them. And it, it's really like I've worked in customer service. So for me, it was, it was all review. But if you're new to customer service, it wouldn't be a bad thing to watch. And they also teach you how to probe the customer, which <laughs> kind of sounds weird, but it just means like ask appropriate questions to get the relevant information that you need. Again, I worked in Geek Squad for a while and we kind of did that there. So none of this was really new to me, but it's, it's good stuff to cover. Also a big part of the exam is the safety part. So just when it comes to working with not just Macs, but any laptops or desktops, there's precautions that you need to take in regard to, you know, ESD and just general handling certain electronics. I actually learned a lot about electrostatic discharge uh, a lot of myths, preconceived notions like ESD isn't even a problem anymore because manufacturers build all of their components to protect against it. Like, or if I have ESD, I'll know right away and, and a, a component won't work. That's not really true. Um, components can die six or eight or 10 months down the line randomly. And that could have been because of ESD. Like ESD has that effect on certain hardware components. Like the little things like that, that I didn't know before going in. And I learned a lot about just like the safety precautions that you should take. Like I've been building PCs for a long time, never really took any huge precautions against it, never needed to. But with this program, learning what I learned, I'm gonna actually start just cause like, it's like a paranoid thing. Also with Apple hardware, it's it's very expensive. So you really don't wanna, you know, f up a logic board. Cause that's a very expensive replacement and can be hard to get your hands on. So yeah, you learn a lot about safety. So after you pass the, and by the way, I'm going to be looking down a bit because I actually have the topics laid out here. But after you pass the service fundamental exam, which again is mostly just like ESD precautions, customer relations, as well as some product knowledge and troubleshooting, you'll have to write the actual Apple certified Macintosh technician exam. That one consists of a lot more material. It's a lot longer. Uh, it's a lot more comprehensive. Basically troubleshoot, <laughs> troubleshooting, <laughs> basically troubleshooting is covered in a lot more detail. Um, so for instance, if you go to the Apple website, it says evaluate and isolate file system issues with Mac OS based systems, giving a net, given a network related customer issue, accurately evaluate, isolate and resolve the issue, correctly identify the diagnostic tool, uh, most appropriate to a given troubleshooting scenario. So this is, these are some of the things you'll be expected to do. Repairing the Mac family is another thing that comes up a lot in the uh, in the exam, obviously. So basically identify the supplies that are necessary to reduce the possibility of damaging the customer's Mac, demonstrate the proper and safe handling of batteries and portable computer case, 
uh, identify specialized tools, fixtures, procedures. That was a big one. With Apple products, there's a lot of specialty tools that you need. Uh, luckily, the Atlas training is really straightforward and really good at organizing these tools and showing you what tools used for what scenario, but it is something that you'll need to know. Um, also, before you guys start panicking, just remember that the final exam is an online a multiple choice uh, test that basically is open books. So you can write the exam while looking a lot of the stuff up online. That's a really good thing thing, but there's two problems with it. One, it's time consuming to do because obviously the, the exam is timed and you can't just be looking everything up all the time because you will run out of time. Secondly, Apple has a lot of great resources that are public that you can look up and use to answer certain troubleshooting questions. But when it comes to like specific tools that are specific to Mac, hardware replacements. It's really hard to find anything on Google. You have to sort of look to the Atlas training program or the Atlas website and look that information up. That's what I did a lot. And that was the thing that saved me really. So when you start the exam, even before you start the exam, bring up like certain segments, like bring up the tools for Mac repairs, bring up certain guides and information and maybe some diagrams that you can use to reference connectors and things like that. So when you're writing the exam, you're not scrambling to find this information because it will be on there. The connectors in particular are kind of a bitch because there was, there's, there was a lot of questions that are like, what's this connector? How, what's this connector? And the, the pictures are like really fuzzy and they're not like, it's kind of funny to me that Apple did this because the training videos are really clear and it's really, it's really concise. You can see what kind of connector it is and what's going on, how it's being unplugged and plugged in. You'll have to know like how to unplug certain connectors since like some of them are angled different, some of them physically they're built different. So you have to physically use them differently. Um, so there's certain ways to unplug them and certain ways to plug them in and handle them. And if you can't even really see what the connector is, it obviously makes it really tough to figure out how you're supposed to handle it. So again, pull up the connector section on Apple atlas and just reference that as you're writing the exam and wear glasses if you need them because like the pictures are really blurry as far as studying goes um, for this exam and really just with any exam you end up taking in your life it helps to study with a friend or buddy uh, in my case i actually studied with my girlfriend and we would sort of bounce questions and answers off of each other and that was really helpful the cool thing is with atlas they have comprehensive quizzes at the end of every section that you read so you'll get like this you'll get like this paragraph and this instructional video on what to look out for and covering whatever material it's covering. And then after that, it'll quiz you on what you just went over. And it'll, it'll be like, what tool was this used for again? And match the, the picture with the tool name and or the connector with the, you know, it'll have all of this information that, that you'll be tested on in the quiz. And it's really nice because that's usually at the end of each section. So it helps keep it fresh. So definitely do those like that's mandatory. I did each quiz one or two times, uh, unless of course I was really shaky on the material, in which case I would actually go over it a lot more just because I, I wanted to have a somewhat of an understanding before taking the exam. But for the most part, the, the thing about this exam is it's not necessarily a challenging exam. When it comes down to it, it's really more of just like a memorization and basic common sense stuff. If you study Atlas, you'll be fine. And there's not a lot of like on the fly troubleshooting that you need to do. Again, if you've read the material in Atlas, you should be able to answer most questions. I never took any practice tests or anything like that. There are some available online. I never bothered to do that. I found the Atlas training questions to be more than sufficient. You can go on and find all of these like huge dumps even some from like Apple themselves that are just basic test questions and example questions of things you might see on the exam. Um, so you can give those a look over. They're there and they might help some of you. I don't know. Another thing too, uh, if you actually want to become a Mac technician, which I didn't, again, I just wanted to pad my resume and learn more about Macs. But if you want to actually be a Mac technician, it helps if you have a Mac to actually test the stuff out that you're learning on. And of course I did. The reason this is super helpful is because there is a portion where you actually go over software troubleshooting and using different key shortcuts to launch into diagnostic tool or the recovery menu. And to actually hands-on test this stuff is super helpful. I recommend if you can to do that. But all in all, I really enjoyed this certification. Uh, a lot more than I thought I would. I learned a ton about Macs, both on the hardware and software side of things. And while I don't want to be a Mac technician, I do feel like I am better off for knowing a lot of the stuff that I know now. And I also think that for the price that I paid, which was $400 Canadian, like that's a lot of money, but it's a, it's a solid cert. It's by Apple, which is obviously a recognized player in IT. And, and I think that if you guys are interested in Macs, you like Macs, and if you want to work with Macs in the future, this is definitely something that you will want to consider for sure.
that's my video. I apologize that I couldn't show you guys the actual training stuff, by the way. Unfortunately, Apple, I've gotten two copyright strikes from them before, and I'm pretty sure a third one could mean trouble. Um, and I'm pretty sure that if I showed you guys the paid training material that they use, I would get in some kind of trouble for that. So I couldn't do that. But really, Atlas is just a website with a bunch of information, mostly videos, small paragraphs explaining certain topics, and then quizzes and tests, and then also like matching up exercises or like fill in the blank exercises, things like that. Yeah, I would have loved to show you guys, but that's just not an option. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot that you made it this far. If you like this video, found it informative, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Let me know how I can improve. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. What a stupid outro. <laughs>